Good morning. Now the story continues. <laughs> I can assure you, you know, that although it might sound a simple story, uh, this took an awful amount of prayer. And there were times when I was full of fear and full of doubt. Don't ever think that the Christian life is all easy for some people. It's not. It really isn't. It's, 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 I was speaking to a friend some time ago, you know, and he was being encouraged by friends to do a parachute jump. And um, he put on the harness, and they trained him and everything, and he went up in the plane. And he had the harness on his back, and the door of the plane was opened. And the pilot said, OK, jump. <laughs> he said, I remembered everything, everything <laughs> that I'd been trained in. Because they don't do this just casually. You are, you are trained. I remembered every part of my training. And I could feel the, the parachute on my back. And I had the ripcord in my hand so I knew when to pull it. And I had the emergency parachute in case that didn't work. And I looked out and it looked an awful long way down. An awful long way down. And then I jumped. And I'm glad to say the parachute opened and he had a wonderful time. He said, now you do it. I said, no, 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 thank you. I don't have that much faith in parachutes. Well, I can assure you that when I was looked at this debt and looked, realized what was happening, I sat in the church and I sat in my study late at night, praying and wondering exactly how this was going to be sorted out. It was a hard, hard time. Yes, they took up the floor. Yes, they did the electrics. Yes, they replaced the floor. All was solid. All was right. Yes, they took up the boiler from where we filled in the underground boiler place. We filled it in and uh, we cut it off and put a new boiler, sorted out the central heating system. Good, powerful boiler that would take heat to every part of the church. We'd sorted out sinks and heating for water and everything else. We did an enormous amount of work in the church at that time. And I remember we had the bills were piling up, but we had this guaranteed overdraft from the, from, uh, overdraft from the, from the bank. And we were working our way through it slowly. Because there was a mess in the church, and it hadn't been decorated for a long time, we brought in decorators, we went right the way through it. We changed almost everything around, painted and decorated until it was in good condition. The church was in good condition. And then I remember looking at the floor and looking at the whole church one day and thinking, we really need to carpet this church. We really need to carpet it. So I went to the warehouse where people were supplying the carpets and I said, come and have a look at the church. And they came and they said, well, we can give you this type of carpet, this type of carpet. We can lay it down. I said, how long will it last? Well, it'll last four or five years, perhaps, perhaps four or five years. I said, right, let's go for a higher grade carpet. They said, higher grade? I said, yes, higher grade. So they went up another grade and I said, no, let's go higher grade again. And finally, we decided on this nice red pattern carpet, a Wilton carpet with a really good underlay for the whole church. And he worked out the price for it. It came to about £3,000 in that money. We're talking about fifteen, twenty, and perhaps thousand in our money today. I looked at what we'd spent, and we spent at this time about um, 23000 What we were, were we going to do? I remember putting, hanging the carpet literally on the altar. We had a big stone altar there. We hung the carpet on the altar, all these different types of carpet. And looking at them and praying about them, being in church late at night, looking at these carpets hanging from the altar and saying, Lord, I want to go for the expensive one because this is your house. I said, OK, we've only spent 23 <laughs> of our 30,000. Let's go for the expensive carpet, which we did. And now we had bills and with extra things that were coming in, and it had grown to about 27,000. I went back to see the bank manager. I said, well, I said, we've got the debt and we've got 27,000, and I knew what the interest rate was going to be because he told me. I said, uh, we're going to do our best. 
He said, do you remember El Elyon? I said, yes, I know El Elyon. He said, well, you've got all this debt. He said, but how is he going to be paid off? I said, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, there were hard times. There were hard times. I came down one day in the vicarage and there was a letter pushed to the door. I picked it up. This was from a local solicitor. He said, um, a couple, um, a person rather, had just died. Uh, uh, husband and wife, and this was the final. The wife I'd buried a couple of year, a year or two before. And the husband had now died as well. And we'd buried him. And the letter was from the solicitor. He said, you have no knowledge of this because they hadn't told you. But they've left their house to the church with instructions that it should be sold and the money put into church funds, not in any way that they wanted to control. You have it to do whatever you want. We've looked at the house. We valued the house. £27,000. Amen.